Okay, welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today is the day I'm going to make a cutting board and I'm going to do a, a epoxy inlay of a deer. Now I'm using walnut and maple and right here I set up a stop on my, cha on my chop saw and I cut all the exact same pieces. I then rip it down on my table saw, rip them exactly in half and that'll give me enough material for a nice thick, I'm going to do about a inch and a half thick cutting board and the idea is to do it with a deer inlay of um, epoxy and right here I'm gluing it up. I tend to try to glue something up every day so it's ready for the next day. It kind of keeps me it keeps me busy. I use these bars to keep the to keep the cutting board nice and flat after I let it sit overnight, I get all the clamps off. I then get my little table saw and my little sled and I cut this thing down to size, make the corners nice and square. Look at that deer in the door right there. You see them? <laughs> They're all over. Now here's my flip top cart. I flip this thing upside down and I have a DeWalt planer on the other side. Get the dust right dust collection and power and hook it up. I then start planing down this cutting board. Here's a different angle. I like this little DeWalt planer. It's actually worked pretty good. I'll probably have to upgrade the, the blades pretty soon. I was thinking about actually getting a different style. They make a, a different one with m multiple little blades that you can actually reverse after they get worn. They have four sides. But this does a nice job. I'm going to keep running it until it doesn't do a nice job anymore. This was actually a tight fit going through there. Once I get it all nice and smooth, it was time to take it over to the CNC machine. So we'll go ahead and create a new file and our dimensions. Now I'm, I'm really trying to improve. So I'm really trying to do these dimensions perfect. That way, that way it all works out really nice and everything's in the center of the project. So our width is 15.3125. Our height is 12.9375. And our thickness we measure with the calipers and it is 1.9375. 5860. Now the thickness is probably one of the more important things. We don't need a high resolution, so we'll do standard and we'll hit OK. So there's our dimension. Now what we need to do, the, before I do the little juice border around this cutting board, I want to just do the epoxy inlay and I'm going to get a file that I already have. Let's see. Yeah, I downloaded this deer and we're going to trace that bitmap and it's black and white. That's what I want. Preview that and apply. Now we're going to go ahead and get rid of the picture and just leave the bitmap. So I need to go in here and get rid of this stuff. But first we have to um, close out of here. We have to highlight it and ungroup all the objects. So now that those are ungrouped, we'll go in here and get rid of all this little stuff. We don't need any extra stuff in our drawing. And then if the one thing I found was if you let's put him in the center. Actually, let's get the whole thing. One thing I found out when you're downloading files, if you look at files like tribal tribal art, the details are a lot better and you can use them a lot better. Now let's zoom in, make sure we don't have any extra stuff. Like right there, you can see this extra little thing right there. We don't need that. Um, Otherwise, you can see I didn't have to do too much to this. Okay. 
Now, how big do we want it? I don't think we want it super big, but let's group these objects and regroup them. And then let's get the size the way we want. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, grab this little thing right here and Uh, that's pretty cool. I don't think it's too big, actually. Okay, we're going to go with that. And everything looks pretty good. So we're going to go right over to our toolpath. We're going to highlight the deer. We're going to go to V-Carve. And I use, uh, it's a white side, 1502, 90 degree bit, half inch diameter, quarter inch shank. We don't need any clearance tools. And we're gonna go ahead, I always write the bit number down. And calculate. All right, that looks good. Preview. Okay, let's close that. Let's, uh, we'll come over here to save. And you need to, I need to highlight my toolpath, check my toolpath, and we're going to save. And we're going to go to our USB drive, get rid of the snow melt sign. Yes. Cancel. Save. Save. And we should be in the right spot, hopefully. USB drive. No, put it in the wrong thing. All right, let's go over the machine and cut this out. Now, right here, I'm using a 1502 white side 90 degree V carve bit, and I'll show you a picture of it right here. And I do the homing sequence. Right there's the homing sequence. I then set it up for XYZ on the touch plate. Put the dust shoe back on and run the program. And the V-carve makes pretty good, pretty quick work of it. And there it is, done. I then clean it all off, take it over to my table, and get ready to epoxy the in. Now, right here, I'm using a stuff called Super Clear. I'll put a link in the description. And this stuff works really well. You're not really supposed to pour it more than a quarter inch, but I have poured it up to a half an inch, and it still works good. And it, it's a really good product for doing these inlays. And right here, I'm mixing some gold, some green, and some green pigment. And I stir it up for about five minutes, or pretty close to five minutes, and then pour it in. I then take my torch and get rid of all the air bubbles. I have to do that a few times. After I let it sit overnight, I take it over to my CNC machine, I write a quick little program. I check the depth really close and I write a little program to surface the top of it. And right here I'm using double sided tape this time. And I'm kind of liking it. I've used it a couple times so far and it holds really well. It's actually hard to get off. Right here I'm using a white side 6210 surfacing bit and it's one inch diameter. Here's a picture of it. XYZ with the touch plate and put the dust shoe on, warm up the spindle, put the dust shoe back on, run the program. Now it's just going to take about an eighth inch off and it'll just take the epoxy and a little bit of wood and it'll be a real nice clean surface. I was surprised how good this little deer looked, even though I did have one little mistake on him, but overall it looked really good. Now right there it wanted to make a second pass, but I, I don't know why. It should have only made one pass, but I went ahead and hit the emergency button and shut it off. Next up we run a program, and here we're going to use a white side uh, ball nose bit to cut the, the, little juice, the little juice slot around the cutting board juice catcher. Right here I do the same thing, XYZ, and run the program. 
does quick work of that. It wasn't easy to get that off that tape, actually. Next up, it was off to the sa to the sander. It, well, right here, I put a, I went ahead and put a little half round around the whole thing. Kind of soften it up. I then get some, uh, get my Makita sand sander, and I need to get dust collection for it. And right here, I'm sanding it with some 200, and then I go to a 600. Next up, it was to get some walrus oil and coat this thing with walrus oil. And now it's really looking good. And there's a picture of it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching Outlaw Woodworking, and I will see you next time. Later.